Last but not least, let us look at our algorithm for conflict analysis. So the purpose of this algorithm is to translate the initially violated conflict no good into another conflict no good that has a unique implication point. This means it has a single literal from the current decision level. So why is this interesting? Well, it's interesting because from the last but one level on up to the maximum level of uh, the remaining uh, literals in the, in the conflict no good, this guy is then ready for unit propagation. And of course we push it as high as possible because the conflict after all sits there and this will be proven a maximum amount of the search space. Anyway, that's the idea of it, right? And uh, the question of course is how is this transformation happening and how is the algorithm doing that? And that's what we will look at now. As before, we first outline uh, our algorithm, then give the algorithm, look at an example, and then summarize a few observations at the end of this section. Okay, so conflict analysis is triggered once a no-good has been violated. That is, there is a no-good among the completion and the dynamic no-goods that is completely contained in the assignment, and this, of course, at a decision level greater than zero. Because if the conflict occurred at decision level zero, this indicates that our original problem is unsatisfiable. Okay, now again, let us just recall a few properties of the whole construction on which the algorithm relies. Now, first of all, uh, all but the first literal on a decision level have been unit resulting for some no good. So, so what does that mean? Keep in mind, we we, we finish the last decision level because unit propagation doesn't work anymore and then a new decision level starts with a non-deterministic choice. Once this choice is made, we start unit propagation and all the guys that follow this first choice are unit resulting for a no-good. And keep in mind, and this is very important, that we track these no-goods. So we know for each unit resulting literal that has been assigned after the, the choice on a decision level, which no good was responsible for this. That is, which no good more or less is the reason for this propagation. Very important. And we actually take now advantage of this. So if we take our conflict no good uh, delta, uh, then actually the, we can pick a literal. And this has been unit resulting for another no good that was responsible for the unit propagation. And keep in mind, our goal is, of course, to eliminate literals from the decision level where the conflict occurred so that we have only one left in order to generate a conflict no good with a unique implication point. That is, our strategy is to eliminate literals that are also on this very last uh, decision level. So how can this be done? Again, delta is our conflict no good that is either the original conflict that we detected up here or has been transformed already. And then we pick one of its literals. Of course, it only makes sense if this guy belongs to the, the very last decision level. And we take uh, the no good that has led to its unit propagation. And now we do resolution on both, right? So we take the conflict no good, we take the reason for one of the literals, and then resolution means we take the literal and remove it from the conflict no good and the complementary literal from the reason, right? And this gives us a new conflict no good. That's the most important thing to observe. We start from a conflict here with delta and then we resolve out more or less a literal in, this, in our conflict no good by taking the reason for it. And keep in mind that since sigma was the result of unit propagation, in epsilon, the complement of sigma must be sitting. So we are sure actually that in delta we have sigma and in epsilon we have its complement. And importantly, the result of this resolution here is again a conflict no good. So this property of being a conflict no good is invariant to this operation. So again, so we start from the no good that was violated initially, then we pick one of the literals in it that belongs to the last uh, decision level where the conflict occurred and we look of course we can only we only pick one when when it was no, uh, a unit residing for no good then in this no good here the complement of this literal is sitting so we have the conflict no good the reason for the literal in this guy we have sigma 
the, the, the literal we pick. In this guy, we have sigma bar, the complement of it. Then we eliminate these guys, union the rest, and this gives us again a new conflict node. Okay, so let's look at an example. So here's a small example. Actually, I picked the example from our running example. So again, perhaps you may want to have a PDF with a, with a table on how things uh, run on the side to see a little bit what is happening here. Okay, good. So anyway, you may remember that a loop no good became conflicting on level three. And this is our guy, right? So u was, u be, u was true, the body with x was false and the body with x and y was false as well. And uh, this meant actually that the poor u had no external support. Okay, I zip it because this is completely irrelevant now. Good. Importantly, this is a conflict no good because it's vi and it's violated at decision level three. Okay. Now, inspecting this conflict no good, we see that there are still two literals from the very same um, decision level. Hence, we do not have a unique implication point. So the strategy is we eliminate one of them. And actually, the, our more refined strategy is we pick the one that was added last in the assignment. Okay, in, this, in our case, it's this guy here. So actually, we now look actually who is responsible for the propagation of, of this literal. And there's actually this no good here. This is the reason. And keep in mind, these are the guys we keep track of, right? So we, 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 we know them. And of course, we now see exactly what I was, exactly what I was saying before. So the conflict no good has the, the picked literal we are interested in. And the, the reason for it has the complement. We see this here. That's the guy we want to eliminate. And in the reason, actually, we have the complement. And then, of course, we can... Uh, eliminate this literal here from the from the from the conflict no good. This uh, literal here from the reason no good, just as we do here and here. And then we union the rest. And what we get in this case is this no good here. So we have this literal and this literal from the conflict no good. And we have uh, this literal here from the reason no good. And again, this guy and this guy have been eliminated. And now, importantly, and again. That, that's something really to, to, to make sure that you, that, that, that you got this. This guy is again a conflict node. This is the, the invariant I was talking about. And it's also violated at decision level three because it needs these two guys here from the decision level, otherwise it's not violated. Again, we have not obtained a unique implication point, so we need to eliminate one. And again, our little strategy is to take the last one that was added to the assignment, so that's actually this guy here. So we look actually which no good was responsible for its unit propagation. And this guy was obtained from this no good here. And again, the same thing as above. This is the conflict no good. That's the reason no good that led to the unit propagation of, of f of the body with x. And this contains the, our, the, the literal that we want to eliminate. And here's actually the complement. So we can erase this one from the conflict no good, erase this one from the re reason no good, and union the, re the remaining elements in the set, and we get this here as the new conflict no good. And again, make, this guy is a conflict no good because it's violated at decision level three. You may actually remember that uh, T of U was the very first choice that we make. This guy is actually sitting at decision level one. And then one, once we come to decision level three, this guy becomes violated. So it's also a conflict no -good. One thing that may be of interest here, just as a side remark, remember that no goods are sets, and sets are idempotent, so you can never have an element twice. And actually what happens here, you see that we resolve on this guy, but here we have f of x, and here we have f of x, hence we only find it once in the resulting set. Okay, and rem remember actually this is the guy now that has a unique implication point, a single literal from the current decision level, from decision level three. And so here we stop now. And we found actually what we are looking for, a conflict no good that has a single literal left from the current decision level where the conflict occurred. Okay, so let's look at some few, uh, some more observations. <laughs> ah, sorry, I just want to make sure that the three that I was actually adding here was just to indicate that these are the literals from the decision level where the conflict occurred. They have no meaning, right? No formal meaning. This was just for illustration. Okay, sorry for that. Mea culpa. 
Well, I'm afraid I already spoiled most of the remarks I've been making on this slide on the previous one. Well, but it doesn't hurt to just make them explicit once more. So first of all, our little strategy. Keep in mind that our goal is to eliminate uh, whenever we have more than one signed literal in the conflict no good from the last decision level to eliminate them such that only one of them remains. And this choice, which one to take, is driven with, by the idea that we take the one that was last added to the assignment. And this is detected actually by this condition. So more or less, if we have a conflict no good, the, liter the literal that satisfies this condition was added last. So in this way, more or less, the, re the, 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 the resolution process proceeds more or less in reverse order on the assignment. But again, this is something which will be very clear when we look again at, at our traces in, these, in the boxes later on. So on our example, these were the three um, conflict no goods. And in the first two cases, we still had two literals left from the decision level and we picked First this one and then this one and in both cases these were the ones that were last added to the assignment. Okay, then when does the whole thing stop? Well, again I spoiled this on the last slide. This iterated resolution uh, on conflict no good stops once we produced a unique implication point. Once we produced a conflict no good that has exactly one literal left from the decision level where the conflict occurred. And all literals that all other literals come from decision levels higher than this. And the really cool property of this conflict no good with this unique implication point is that it is ready for unit propagation from the last but one level up to the maximum level of the remaining literals. And of course, what we of course do, we add it to this level here. Okay, anyway, I think I'm just reiterating this, but I think the overall idea is always good to keep in mind. Anyway, on our small example, the unique implication point it was this guy, right? Because once we go to level two or level one, this no good here will produce will produce this literal. That is this oh no, the, co the complement of it. Ha <laughs> ha. T of x is of course a unit resulting for this no good here on decision level two and one. Okay, so, and these are more or less uh, the remarks I wanted to make before looking at the algorithm. So here's our conflict analysis algorithm. In fact, some of there is no new concept in there. It more or less makes precise what we have been discussing on the two previous slides with these little examples. So what we get as input is actually a violated no good, delta. Uh, our program, uh, a set of dynamic no goods, and the current assignment. And what we spit out at the end is a, a new, or perhaps also the same, conflict no good and a decision level where to jump back to. So uh, the algorithm loops, and more or less, these are all the resolution steps that we do. And the first thing it does, it picks the the literal from the conflict no good that was added last to the assignment. This is again the condition that does that. Then it looks at all the remaining literals and determines their uh, decision level and takes the maximum one. So if the maximum one is the same as where the conflict occurred, well, then we have to engage resolution. Uh, so we pick the reason for our uh, literal and then we resolve the conflict no good with a reason no good and we produce a new conflict no good and start all over again. So in case uh, the maximum decision level of the remaining ones is not the current decision level and hence smaller, then we are done because then we have found a unique implication point and we return the last no conflict no good from the iteration and this maximum decision level of the remaining literals. Okay, and that's it. So, I guess let's delve into an example. That's now the time. So, here we are for the last time back with our good old running example. So, just to set a little bit the stage, you may remember that conflict-driven no-good learning starts. Uh, it tries to propagate where no propagations are obtained at level zero. So, a, a first choice is made. U is assigned the truth value uh, true. Well, no propagation is happening, 
another choice is made, then this leads to decision level two. In that case, it is decided to assign faults to this body here, right? Now actually some propagation is happening, at least unit propagation. So we get actually that W must be false. But well, no unfounded sets are found, no further unit propagation happens. We have to make another choice. So we end up at decision level three. We now assign faults to the body of, of, of this rule here. And now a lot of propagation is false coming. First we do unit propagation, unit propagation, unit propagation. Then we reach a fixed point of unit propagation and unfounded set detection is engaged. And indeed, um, there, we, we, we see that actually there is an unfounded set that is, uh, that is uh, detected, right? Oh. <laughs> and this contains U and V. And for this, we now add the loop no good. We pick actually the atom U and add this loop no good here, which says it cannot be the case that U is true and both externally supporting bodies are false. But this indeed happened. So this is then a conflict no good, a no good that has been violated. And we see that by observing that the first literal, the second and the third of this no good are all three contained in the current assignment. Okay. And now actually the, uh, this no good has been detected as being violated by the, the CDNL algorithm and now conflict analysis is engaged. So the first thing to note is this uh, conflict no good does not contain a unique implication point. Rather, it still contains two literals from the current decision level, this guy and this guy. Hence, we have to eliminate uh, at least one of them to get a unique implication point. So our strategy says we do this elimination by resolving or by eliminating, resolving out or eliminating uh, the last literal that was added to the assignment. This is actually this guy here. And we do this by resolving our conflict no good with the reason no good for this literal. And keep in mind by construction, right, since this guy uh, was unit resulting for this no good, the complement of this, this literal must be contained in it. This is of course here, and here's the literal that we want to eliminate. We resolve on these two complementary literals by eliminating the false literal from the conflict no good, the true uh, literal from the reason no good, and obtain a new conflict no good. That's really important to realize that the guy we obtain as a result of this resolution step is again a conflict no good. So this means that T of u is here in the assignment, f of x is here, and f of the body with x is here. So all three of them are all the assignment. This is also a conflict. However, well, as we've seen before, uh, it does not have a unique implication point. There are still two literals actually on the current decision level. So again, we pick the uh, literal that was added last to the assignment, which is this guy, and we resolve our conflict the current conflict no good with the reason for this literal, which is now this guy. So we remove the complementary pair of literals and we union the remaining literals to obtain a new conflict no good. And now things get interesting. First of all, this is also a conflict no good. So T of U is here and F of X is here. But now actually this conflict no good has a unique implication point. So there's only one literal left um, from the current uh, decision level where the conflict occurred and so conflict analysis stops. And this guy is now again interesting because uh, it is unit resulting from the last but one level at level two, right? Because there's T of U is at one. So if we would, if we would clear level three and then resume unit propagation and add this to the dynamic uh, no goods, we would get a propagation level two. But why do this? Because we can go as up as the maximum level as the maximum level uh, of the remaining uh, literals in the conflict node. Oh, well, that was hard. So what do we get? Well, in our tiny conflict case, so the, the other literals, this is T of U, there the maximum level is one. And in fact, taking this no good to level one would also yield in a unit resulting literal because T of U uh, is here. And of course we can take it only up to the maximum level because above uh, it will not be unit, uh, unit resulting anymore. But that's more or less what, what we can do and what we do because this is after all where the conflict sits. 
So if we do this and we take more or less, we, we exit a conflict analysis with this no good and the maximum level of the remaining literals, that is one, we then go back to this level here, to level one. So we clear level three, we clear level two, more or less we pop things off the stack and we arrive back at level one. And keep in mind, we've already been at level one. And, and, but here we could not do any, any propagation, right? But now actually we have this new no good added to our dynamic no goods. And now by construction, unit propagation is possible because the no good was constructed exactly in that way. And we can assert uh, the complement of the of 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 the literal f of x, namely t of x, right? And then unit propagation has been able to derive something new, and actually it can resume, and we obtain a stable model that makes u, x, and v true. And in this cozy case, we can do we can determine this stable model just by jumping back to level one, resuming unit propagation, and unit propagation reaches a fixed point, and we have a stable model. So. I hope that this illustrates a little bit not only conflict analysis but also the global setting. One thing I would like to highlight again. So in backtracking, you jump back, well, and you don't jump back, you go back to the next level and you flip the decision level. Well, here, first of all, we jump back, so we actually jump back several levels, only, th only two in our case, but nonetheless, right? But then we did not flip the decision level here, right? Rather, we said, okay, we produced a conflict no good that will resume um, that will resume uh, propagation and indeed we now deduced actually that x must be true while on the assignment that we had before it was somehow below but there it had actually the truth value false so it's really this no good that we add that just allows us to resume no good propagation at a level where we could not apply it anymore that now actually catapults us in another area of the search space now before we were in an area where x was false with this assignment and now we are in an area where x is true. So no flipping of the, of the, of the chosen literal anymore, just unit propagation does the job in, th in, in throwing us in another part of the search space. Okay, so that's it folks for this example. Let's now do some final observations and wrap up with this uh, section. Last but not least, let's just nail down a few observations made while already discussing the, the algorithm and, and the example. Good, so first of all, it's important to note that our procedure always ends with a conflict no good that contains a first UIP. It just stops whenever it finds the first one and in the worst case, it ends up with a decision literal, right? Also, I should mention at that point that this strategy of finding the first UIP is actually one of, among many, many other strategies one can em, uh, employ. But this is interestingly the one that just works best. And to be honest, nobody really knows why this is the best. One can argue from a practical perspective, but there is no theoretical uh, underpinning of that. So this is food for thought and matters for a good thesis, bachelor, master, PhD thesis. Anyway, good. I zip it here, right? So, but anyway, I, I just want to reflect a little bit what is really still intriguing about this whole field, right? You make observations by doing experiments and you can't explain them. And many, many uh, actually results were first discovered experimentally in this field, in ESP solving and notably SAT solving, before then people actually got a better understanding and could actually supply a theoretical reason why certain things work and why they don't work. And keep in mind that, uh, again, a big leap now and then I zip it, right? That when I did my PhD beginning of the 90s, SAT solvers, for instance, could deal with 100 variables or so. Now we are at 10 millions or so with ASP or SAT solvers, right? And many of the discoveries that led to that were first based on a hunch, right? And then an implementation and then experiments. And then afterwards, actually, the theory of all this was developed and explained why things work so well. And not everything has been explained yet. So now I zip it really hard and go back to conflict analysis. Okay, so next thing again, something we've already discussed. The no good that contains the first UIP is violated in the assignment, right? And uh, more or less the, the maximum decision level of the remaining uh, 
the drills, right? If we subtract the first UIP from the no good and we look at the decision level of the remaining literals inside and take the maximum, that's where we have to jump back to. That's always by construction, right? Because the decision level or the, 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 the first UIP is the last and only literal of the decision level. So this maximum is definitely smaller than the current decision level. And that's actually where we can jump back to. And once we more or less added our conflict no good with the unique implication point uh, to the dynamic no goods, jump back at this decision level, it's, it's right away engages unit um, propagation by asserting the complement of the unique uh, implication point. So actually we can then, once we jump back, right away assert the complement of this guy. Actually, such a no good that is then right away ready for propagation is called asserting. And these asserting no goods are actually the one, right, that make us go from one area in the search space uh, to another. And we can do this without explicitly flipping a decision literal as done in classical backtracking. So anyway, this sums up a little bit uh, the, the commands I've been already making here and there in the, in, the, in the previous discussion. So you have it here now one, once, once more. And again, as I said at the very beginning, you may want to go back and forth because first we had the outline, then we had the algorithm, then the example, then the observations. And things uh, become clear once actually you do an iteration or look at, look at it from a diff different angles. Okay, That's what, that was it on conflict-driven no-good learning. I hope you enjoyed it. Now let's wrap up this uh, part with a few things to remember.